Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I want to say a few words about the connection between the Rambus conjecture and growth in groups. So, first of all, let me revive this uh, rather well known conjecture from the theory of uh, the continued fractions. So, we consider the continued fraction expansion uh, in the following expression um, as J are. Positive integers, they are called partial quotients. And uh, the Rambo conjecture uh, asks uh, 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 the following question now, Let's fix uh, a positive integer q, and uh, we want to find uh, the denominator a such that a is comprised with q, such that uh, the ratio a over q. If you consider the continued fraction expansion of this ratio, then all partial quotients are bounded by uh, some constant. The Remba uh, conjectured that this constant equals five. Uh, so uh, one more time, for any fixed Q, for any fixed denominator, we want to find uh, an unit numerator A such that A over Q has all partial quotients uh, bounded by by some constant. Yeah. Uh, this five is uh, because of uh, numerical experiments uh, for small uh, numerators Q. Uh, uh, you see that uh, SJ can be uh, equal four, uh, but maybe uh, if um, uh, one just threw away finite number of uh, of q then uh, actually maybe this constant e e equals uh, even two okay uh, nevertheless we are very far from this conjecture and uh, uh, the best result in this direction is due to korobov uh, uh, but uh, let me say a few words before this uh, about the motivation of Zaremba, why uh, he uh, needed in such strange uh, uh, hypothesis. So his was his motivation was uh, from the theory, theory of numerical integration. Uh, suppose that we have a function on the dimensional cube. Uh, suppose that uh, this function f has bounded variation, and uh, uh, we, we are trying to calculate uh, the integral of uh, this cube, the integral uh, over this function f, uh, choosing a finite number of points x. So x is a finite set, and we want to approximate our integral by uh, this uh, finite sum. Then uh, a classical cox McLaughlin inequality says that this uh, uh, difference can be estimated as uh, the ratio and uh, the discrepancy. What is the discrepancy? Uh, the discrepancy is a very natural object. Uh, I take any rectangle R and calculate um, the frequency of appearance of my set X in R. So I consider uh, cardinality of the intersection of X and R over uh, size of X. And after that, I uh, subtract uh, just uh, the measure of my rectangle. And after that, take, uh, I take uh, the, the supreme. So uh, it's a classical inequality. Uh, uh, the variation depends on function. Uh, we have no uh, influence on this uh, uh, parameter. But uh, the real question here is how to find this set X uh, with, with small discrepancy. So that's the question. And uh, we have uh, a lower bound. It's another famous result of Volvagen Schmidt. Uh, uh, who say that uh, actually there is an untrivial low bound for discrepancy, and uh, you cannot find uh, your set X uh, ideally. So um, uh, uh, any any sequence of uh, points uh, has uh, an untrivial bound for uh, its discrepancy. 
So Perini finds x discrepancy is uh, greater than log x over x. Uh, 1 over x is a trivial bound, but there is uh, this um, uh, trivial factor, uh, log x. So uh, that's the lower bound, and uh, we want to find the same uh, upper bound. And I should say that uh, if uh, if I take uh, my set X to be a random set, then uh, the discrepancy will be very nasty. Uh, the discrepancy is uh, more or less one over square root of X, and uh, Thus, uh, my x should be non-random and some specific set. Uh, so, uh, the I suggested the following uh, winding of two-dimensional torus. From this moment, uh, my dimension is uh, just two. So, uh, I consider uh, just square, uh, zero, one squared. And uh, uh, let me um, take two parameters, a and q. And consider the following discrete uh, visit of uh, the two dimensional torus. So it has Q points, and the uh, uh, proved that uh, the quality of this X in the previous sense, uh, I mean, uh, in this Coxma uh, glove inequality, depends on uh, the continuous fraction expansion of A over Q. More precisely, if uh, A over Q has uh, these partial quotients and M is uh, the maximum of these partial quotients, then the discrepancy can be bounded uh, in this way. And you see that if my M, this maximum, is uh, really constant, then uh, this uh, multiple is constant. And you see that the upper bound uh, coincides with. Uh, uh, the lower bound of uh, uh, Schmidt. So that was the motivation of Zaremba. Is it true that uh, for any Q, I can find A, such that uh, all partial quotients of uh, A over Q as J uh, are bounded by some constant M? If so, then uh, I obtain an optimal result for discrepancy. And uh, this optimal result uh, is attained on a very concrete uh, and natural, actually. Okay. So, Krubov proved uh, that uh, this constant M can be uh, taken tending to an infinity, uh, unfortunately. So, uh, he proved in the case of uh, Q equals uh, a prime number, it's a very important case. Uh, he proved that um, there is a said that uh, all partial quotients of this ratio, A over Q, um, uh, are bounded by logarithm of uh, Q. Of Q. Um, and for composite Q, this result was uh, repeated by uh, Rukavishnikova. And actually, both Korobov and Rukavishnikova results uh, uh, take this uh, uh, numerator A in a random sense. So uh, for typical A, A over Q uh, uh, has all partial quotients bounded by log. Uh, Rukavishnikov obtained uh, uh, a series of um, uh, probability uh, results in, in a probability uh, sense, uh, like uh, central limit theorem uh, for partial quotients and, uh, and so on. For example, uh, and this demonstrates um, uh, the essence of uh, uh, the results that. Um, the number of A, uh, which account prime with Q, and uh, says that maximum of, of all partial quotients of uh, A over Q is greater than T, is bounded by log Q over T. So, once again, uh, typical A uh, gives us a logarithm uh, for uh, M. Okay, so it's, it's the best result at the moment, uh, and um, uh, even uh, taking sm small of uh, logarithm of p is a, a 
so uh, uh, for specific Q, uh, ceramic conjecture is known to be true. It's an, uh, it's a, uh, the famous result of uh, Niederreiter who proved that for a specific Q, say Q equals two to the n or three to the n, uh, you can take uh, even uh, m equals four and for five to the m, uh, m equals five. And there are another results in this direction by um, uh, other mathematicians uh, who uh, takes other sequences of Q, uh, uh, not exponentially growing, but even faster. Uh, and uh, more or less, uh, all these results uh, are based on the following idea, so-called uh, folding lemma. There are several variants of folding lemma. I just mentioned one of them. So if uh, I consider my continued fraction expansion, uh, I can write uh, the numerator and the denominator uh, like uh, two polynomials, and these polynomials are called continuants. And uh, our problem, the Rambus conjecture says that uh, for any Q, there is a continuum uh, S1, SS, uh, with bounded uh, uh, SJ, such that this continuum uh, is exactly equal to Q. So is J abounding, and we want to represent Q as a uh, continent of uh, these partial quotients. So there is a formula, uh, a palindromic type formula for continents. Uh, it's very easy to, to obtain. Uh, so if I have this almost palindrome, you see uh, these parts are equals uh, in reverse order. Uh, then for any x, uh, I can calculate this continent uh, uh, in this way. So uh, you see, after that, I can use uh, induction, right? Uh, so if my q is uh, 2 to the n, say, then uh, uh, if I represent uh, q, some q, uh, 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 as a continuant with S1, Sj, then by this formula I can represent uh, the larger continuant and uh, my new Q will be what? Uh, 2 to the n squared, right? Uh, times, I can choose uh, x equals uh, 1, say, or 3, and after that uh, I obtain uh, this out, uh, with to the, to the, the end. Of course, uh, there are uh, some technicalities here, but the idea uh, is this. Uh, so recently, rather recently, uh, uh, there is a, uh, it was a huge progress uh, in Zarembe's conjecture by Bugan and Kandarovich, who proved that Zarembe's conjecture uh, is true for almost all Q. So um, uh, they considered uh, Q from the segment uh, from 1 to N and uh, ask, uh, is it true that for this Q, Zarembe's conjecture uh, holds with some constant M? And they showed that uh, uh, for almost all Q, uh, Zarembe's conjecture takes place. Uh, moreover, uh, it holds for Q, uh, the number of such q is greater than n minus this uh, very small error term. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, and uh, you see this error term is 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 very is very small. Uh, for example, from the, the uh, from this result follows that uh, there are infinitely many primes uh, for which Zarembe's conjecture uh, takes place. And uh, moreover, uh, this dependence on M and big O can be uh, calculated uh, in a concrete, uh, concrete way. For example, if uh, one takes uh, uh, M equals 50, then uh, they show that there is a positive proportion of such Qs uh, that the Lewis conjecture holds for. Uh, after that, uh, their results were improved. Uh, and generalized by many other authors, and actually simplified uh, by uh, uh, Kahn and uh, Ferlinkov. Uh, they simplified uh, not the whole paper, but some 
parts uh, of it. Uh, for example, uh, the best result in this direction for concrete M belongs to Igor Khan, who proved that uh, if M equals four, then uh, for all but small of N numbers of Q, uh, the Remus conjecture holds. Okay, so, but maybe this result holds for M equals two. Okay, so uh, what was the motivation? Uh, 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 why why do we do we believe in, in this conjecture? This is very strange conjecture. Uh, it can be uh, uh, can be uh, explained in the more general context uh, uh, of uh, Fuchs uh, groups, but uh, for Hensley who uh, uh, who Mm, uh, uh, gives us uh, a, a, a heuristic and explanation. Um, uh, Hensley, uh, uh, Hensley considers the following real dynamic uh, of Zarembo's conjecture. So he considered the following set of real numbers. So alpha belongs to the segment from zero to one, all SJ are bounded by M, and then it was a result of Hensley that uh, the Hausdorff dimension of this uh, set can be estimated uh, in a very nice way. For example, uh, W2 uh, equals this number is uh, slightly greater than one half. Actually, it's important for us that it's greater than one half. Uh, and, uh, and we see that uh, uh, Real numbers with partial quotients, uh, which are zero, uh, sorry, one and two, uh, has rather a large host of dimension. Uh, this asymptotic was known by Hinch in, in the 30s. Uh, actually, for us, it's uh, it be sufficient to know that Wm is one minus the uh, goal of one over m. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, 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 Hensley considered a slightly more general situation. Uh, he um, uh, treated this alpha uh, like uh, infinite words, uh, as j belonged to uh, a, a certain alphabet. In this case, uh, the alphabet is uh, just uh, numbers from 1 to m. And he asked uh, the following question. Suppose that we have uh, a, finite now, uh, a finite set uh, A, it's uh, our alphabet. And suppose that the dimension of the corresponding uh, counter set is greater than one half. So uh, now uh, my set of real numbers satisfy the following property as J belong uh, to uh, alphabet, to fixed alphabet uh, alpha. Then, uh, if I have uh, the following alphabet, the following set of real numbers, then the Rambus conjecture takes place uh, for almost uh, for all sufficiently large Q. So, for all sufficiently large Q, there is A such that all partial quotients of this ratio uh, belong to my alphabet alpha. Uh, so, it's a more general con. Conjecture, but nevertheless, uh, uh, there is a, an interesting uh, restriction. Uh, one uh, one half, yes, house of dimension is greater than one half. Uh, and I will explain you uh, uh, um, the heuristic of uh, Hensley, uh, uh, which explains why uh, we can believe in the Rambo conjecture, even in this strong uh, and general form. Actually, in this strong and general form, this conjecture falls, and it was uh, shown by Bogdan and Kantarovich, uh, but uh, it falls by some uh, little bit uh, trivial reasons. Uh, um, just uh, there are no some um, uh, natural concurrence conditions on uh, on uh, uh, my uh, counter set. Uh, so if this condition holds, maybe. Uh, 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 maybe uh, uh, Hensley conjecture takes place. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, 
why why do we believe in this uh, one half in this house of the nature greater than one half? Uh, Hence, to derive uh, the following um, uh, consequence of uh, his uh, uh, result about house of dimension, he had, he considered the following discrete uh, now discrete set uh, to discrete two parametric set. So uh, uh, he considered uh, all ratios of the form u over v uh, such that uh, all sj are bounded by m and u and v run over one uh, from one to q and uh, u and v are compressed. Then it's very easy to show that uh, 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 size of this set uh, can be estimated, uh, can be calculated actually with very uh, precise bounds, with perfect bounds. Uh, 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 so uh, this, uh, the size of this two parametric set is just uh, Q to the 2 uh, WM, that holds of dimension. And actually, it's also rather well known uh, in general fact for general groups. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, uh, from this point of view, we can look at uh, the Lambert conjecture as uh, a question about one parametric set. So now we fix uh, the denominator, say a prime P, and A run from, uh, runs from one to p minus one, and uh, we again want to find as j said that uh, all partial quotients are bounded by some constant. So if we believe in the uniform distribution in the denominators, then uh, we need to uh, just uh, divide the previous bounded by the number of the denominators. So p to the two w m over p. And we obtain the following uh, quantity, and you see that if the house of dimension is greater than one half, then this quantity uh, is uh, test to infinity. And in particular, size of my uh, Zaremba set uh, tends to infinity. So uh, that was the motivation of Hensley, uh, and you see it doesn't depend on any alphabet here. Uh, just uh, we need uh, that the host of dimension is greater than one half. So our uh, first result uh, with uh, Nikolai Mashvitin and Brandon Murphy, uh, we proved that uh, this heuristic of Hensley uh, holds in the sense that there is the same upper bounds for size of uh, the Rambo set. So for any epsilon, for any error epsilon, there is uh, M, so that uh, uh, the fallen upper bound takes place. So you see uh, there is 2 WM minus 1, plus the error 2. And moreover, we proved that actually uh, uh, one can uh, obtain the Rambo's conjecture uh, uh, if uh, 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 an interval, uh, a very small middle interval uh, will be removed. So for any prime P and epsilon, there is M such that if I consider uh, uh, the continued fraction expansion of uh, a certain A over P, then all SJ can be taken uh, less than M uh, out of this uh, of this middle interval of size epsilon S. So uh, in some sense we are close, epsilon close to the rambo conjecture, but actually we don't know what to do about it. Uh, so now I want to talk about the methods. Uh, surprisingly, the methods uh, use uh, growth in groups. Uh, they use the following uh, uh, very, very beautiful theorem of, of Harald Helgot, who proved that if I have a set of um, uh, uh, matrices uh, this coefficients over Fp and the denominator equals one. And suppose that my set generates uh, SL2 of Fp, then either A cubed equals SL2 of Fp, uh, A cubed is the set of all uh, possible triples, uh, 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 products A, A1 times A2 and uh, times uh, AB. Or this uh, triple set uh, is uh, grows exponentially 
uh, fast. So uh, size of a cubed is greater than one a uh, to the power one plus c, where c is an absolute constant. Uh, so it's a growth result, very strong exponential growth result in, in, in groups, in, in one group, but after that, Hengot result was uh, generalized in, uh, uh, in several directions. And uh, actually, this result uh, implied uh, the following uh, uh, result on uniformity, which is even more surprising. Uh, so Bogan and Gabbard showed that uh, if I have a set A, uh, which uh, uh, doesn't belong any uh, uh, any subgroup, any cassette of the subgroup in a very strong sense, it, it, um, I mean that uh, if I consider uh, uh, any cassette of any subgroup H, any proper subgroup H, then uh, the intersection of A in this cassette is less than A. So A doesn't live in any cassette. Uh, of course, it implies that A is a generated set, but it's a uh, more um, strong to the, uh, uh, assumption. So uh, if, if so, then um, uh, actually we will see the uniform distribution. So the number of representation of any S uh, like uh, uh, product of uh, elements of A, of course, by Hengot's result, we know that A generates uh, SL2 of FP and in a very uh, fast way because we have exponential growth. So, uh, more, moreover, uh, after uh, exponential number of steps, uh, we uh, generate uh, SL2 in a uniform way. It means that there is uh, the following asymptotic formula. We have uh, the expectation plus the error term, which depends on this key. Uh, uh, so it's a very nice result, but actually it's a consequence of Hengot's theorem. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, used one more tool here. They uh, used the fact that uh, the dimension of all uh, irreducible uh, unitary representation of SL2 of FP is at least uh, p minus one over two. It's a famous result of uh, Frobenius, and actually they prove the very, uh, the very general fact that if I have uh, growth in Hilgos sense, and plus I have uh, uh, quasi randomness in the sense of Gauss, it means that uh, the dimension of all uh, not trivial uh, representation is greater than uh, size of any group G. Uh, to the epsilon, so now I am uh, able to group G, then actually these two facts uh, automatically imply the uniform distribution. Okay. Uh, okay, so... I, I will skip this uh, slide. Uh, let me... Uh, let me say now uh, a few words about our new results. Uh, so, um, and how? So, uh, our new result with Nikolai uh, uh, concerned the so called um, uh, modular Zadrembo conjecture. This question was uh, considered by Hensley, who obtained uh, some results in this direction. Uh, so, uh, in this formulation, I have a prime P. And I want to find Q, which is divisible by P. So, uh, automatically, uh, Q is larger than P, uh, but uh, uh, it's not so larger than P. So, uh, Q is somehow comparable with P. So, size of Q is uh, below P to the 30. Then, I uh, can find A, which is comparing this Q, such that all partial equations of A over Q are bounded by some constant uh, M. So, once again, for any P, I find Q, which is comparable with P, and all partial equations of uh, a certain A over Q uh, are bounded by M. Moreover, we, uh, we proved uh, this Nikolai machine in the, the following result about partial quotients uh, bounded by two. So it's very uh, interesting. Uh, so uh, uh, there is a huge uh, absolute constant C, 
such that for any uh, prime p, such that uh, uh, q is divisible by p and q is comparable with p in this way, I can find a such that a over q uh, has uh, partial quotients abounded by two. Yes. So, uh, a new result of mine uh, is the following. For any epsilon, there is a, a constant m dependent on a, a epsilon only. Uh, and for any prime p, I can find q, which is so comparable with p, that, that all partial quotients of a or q are bounded by m. So you see that uh, it's somehow the limit of the previous method, uh, epsilon equals zero uh, gives us Zaremba's conjecture, literally, uh, uh, yes. Uh, and I want to talk uh, about uh, how to prove this result and our previous result with uh, Mashirid, uh, using growth in groups. Uh, again, in our new results, we use growth in groups in a, um, in a deeper way. So uh, uh, let me uh, let me uh, say a few words about uh, a little bit uh, more general context. Uh, so um, I want to uh, I want to uh, study growth uh, in uh, so-called Chevalier groups or groups of Lie type. For us, uh, these words are synonymous. So, uh, for uh, you know, th from uh, the uh, application of fine simple groups, that uh, there are mm, three infinite uh, families uh, of groups: uh, uh, the prime field, uh, the Ternetti group, groups of lead type, and uh, 27 sporadic groups. So, for for us, we we are, we are interested in this uh, uh, thought. Uh, uh, families, ensemble of groups. Uh, they are all classified, of course. Uh, they are classical groups, uh, uh, SLN, unitary group, uh, and so on, uh, orthogonal group. And uh, there are non matrix groups, and also uh, there are some exceptional groups uh, like Steinberg and Suzuki G groups. Uh, there is uh, a, a formal uh, formal uh, definition, but I will skip it. So for us, uh, uh, let's consider the simple situation of SLM. Uh, so we are interested in, in Borel subgroup. It's uh, uh, the standard Borel subgroup. It's a, uh, it's a subgroup of uh, the upper triangle matrices. And uh, we are interested in parabolic subgroups. Uh, by definition, a parabolic subgroup contains uh, a Borel subgroup. So uh, any subgroup of such type or conjugates of, uh, of this, uh, the upper uh, uh, triangle subgroup. So uh, in the case of uh, SLN, uh, this family, it's very easy to describe. It's just uh, the matrices of the following form, uh, uh, J are square blocks. Uh, uh, so, uh, actually, it's uh, the only, I would say, uh, understandable uh, subfamily of subgroups in Chevalier groups. Uh, and um, uh, this n, uh, n minus 1, is called the rank of SLN. In any uh, Chevalier groups, uh, there is a rank. Uh, so, uh, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is a famous conjecture of uh, Baba, uh, uh, we say that uh, any finite simple group uh, actually generates uh, in a very uh, uh, fast way. So, for any set which generates uh, uh, any finite simple group, for example, any Chevalier group, uh, actually it generates uh, this group very effectively. So, I need just in this number of multiplications such that. Uh, uh, a to the n equals g. So if generates uh, if a generates g in principle, then it uh, 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 it does it uh, very quickly. 
And uh, Varembo's conjecture, uh, sorry, Baba's conjecture is known to be true for groups of lead type. Uh, uh, it's a generalization of result of Hilgot by Breer, Green, Tau, Piper, Saba. Uh, they prove that this exponential growth uh, holds for any fine super group of lead type or for any Chevalier group. Uh, and in particular, it implies Baba's conjecture. Uh, for such groups, but uh, uh, actually uh, this results works uh, uh, just for for groups with a small rank, uh, because you see this constant because uh, depends on rank. So for very large groups, or alternating groups as well, uh, this uh, theorem uh, gives. Um, Okay, so uh, we know something about growth in Chevalier groups, but uh, uh, in our uh, particular case, ah, one more result. Uh, what do we know uh, in general about Chevalier groups? Uh, it's a, a generalization of uh, uh, Frobenius result about a representation. So uh, it's um, it's a theorem of uh, Lanzo results uh, who say that actually. For any Chevalier groups, there is an analog of Frobenius theorem in the following sense. If R uh, is the rank of my Chevalier groups uh, G of Q, then the size of all uh, minimal representation is greater than Q to the R. Uh, so this Q to the R, uh, it's a very natural uh, uh, quantity. Uh, if I consider uh, uh, the maximal by size, the maximal by size parabolic subgroup, then Q to the R is just the index of this subgroup. And uh, it means, uh, in particular, that this bound is um, optimal. Yes, and uh, it uh, says also that uh, there is a gap between sizes of uh, all subgroups in several groups. There is a whole math groups, G of Q, and after that, uh, there is uh, the maximal parabolic subgroup, maximal by size uh, parabolic subgroups, and after that, smaller subgroups. So, uh, by some reasons uh, which uh, are connected with Zaremba's conjecture, I am interested in the following question. I am not interested in generating the whole uh, group, uh, whole Chevalier groups, or whole SL2. I am interested in uh, generating uh, a parabolic subgroups. So uh, I have a set A, and I want uh, to find a non-empty intersection uh, with uh, a parabolic subgroup H, rather large. Of course, if I uh, if uh, I uh, don't know uh, uh, Baba's conjecture, then there is uh, nothing to ask. But uh, I am formulating a weak question. Uh, I want to um, uh, find an element uh, in uh, my orbit a to the n, belonging a rather large, very large uh, parabolic subgroup uh, of uh, G of Q. So that is uh, an algebraic question. And uh, our first result in, the, in this direction is the following. So uh, from uh, Lanzo results, uh, there is uh, the following um, uh, growth result, uh, if uh, I have a set of size slightly larger than size of maximum parabolic subgroup, then I generalize uh, uh, the Chevalier group uh, in a very effective way. Of course, if I take uh, uh, this maximum parabolic subgroup, then I uh, do not generate uh, G to the Q. But if I take larger subgroup, uh, larger set, uh, then I generate the whole group. Then the first result is a uh, uh, simple consequence of Lanzer results. Uh, and uh, I, I want to underline that this set is uh, arbitrary. I don't uh, uh, require that A generates G of Q uh, because then it's trivial. Uh, it's any set. So our first result is the following. Uh, suppose uh, that I want to uh, find non-empty intersection with A to the N and uh, any parabolic subgroup. Then, actually, I can uh, improve this uh, restriction. I consider uh, uh, any set of size 
P uh, max uh, Q to the delta over Q. Uh, and uh, uh, for such small sets, anyway, a to the n intersects E. So uh, basically, I improved this uh, uh, classical result by this one. And this one is very important for me. So another result uh, of uh, gross uh, resolute parabolic subgroups is the following. Uh, what can we say about product of any set and uh, any parabolic subgroup? So if I consider a set of this form, X times P, so it's a union of cassettes of A, right cassettes of A, then of course, multiplied by P from the right, I obtain A. So there is no growth here. Similarly, if A equals P Y, then multiplied by P from the left, I have no growth. But if I uh, multiply uh, simultaneously from uh, left and from the right, then there is a growth. So uh, for any set and for any parabolic subgroup, with some mild, uh, I need in some mild uh, restrictions, say uh, uh, the intersection is empty, not important, then uh, this maximum actually grows. So uh, for example, if A is less than P, then this maximum is greater than uh, uh, is greater than a uh, times square root of q. So I I I I I have a growth uh, by square root of q. So let me uh, apply these results to the Rampus conjecture. Uh, so uh, in the Rampus conjecture, uh, sorry. In the Rambus conjecture, uh, we associate with continuous fractions the following set of matrices. So if I have uh, the fraction PS over QS, then I consider the following product. Um, um, it can be written this way. And uh, uh, the de determinant of these matrices uh, are, are plus minus ones. Uh, so uh, uh, I obtain a set uh, of matrices from SO2 of FP, more or less. And uh, of course, in the Rams conjecture, I am interested in uh, SJ abounded by M. So that's my restriction. And also suppose that QS is less than it's uh, the largest uh, element uh, for, uh, in these matrices. So um, uh, suppose that all uh, elements here are less than P. So by Hensley's lemma, the size of A, uh, 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 it's easy to calculate. Uh, by Hinch, we know that this quantity is uh, uh, P uh, to WM is uh, just P to the uh, two minus uh, big O of one O M. So it, it, it's a little bit less than P squared. So e, A is large, but not so large. For compare, to compare uh, size of L, SL2 is P cubed and size of uh, uh, our standard uh, Borel subgroup is P squared. So it's a little bit less than P uh, squared. So A uh, can live, uh, lives in, uh, in the, uh, some Borel subgroup. So after that, uh, once again, I, I have the following set, and uh, let uh, suppose that A to the N contains zero. Say this element of my matrix is zero uh, modulo P. So I consider this orbit A to the M, and suppose that I find uh, this zero in my orbit. Then, uh, just by multiplication, by matrix multiplication, I know that uh, QS minus one is bounded by uh, 2p to the n, uh, q uh, s minus 1 is divisible by p, and uh, p s minus, minus 1 uh, over q s minus 1 has partial quotients abounded by m, just by definition. So uh, this problem, this uh, uh, modular problem of Hensley can be interpreted, uh, uh, reformulated in the following very classical uh, 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 way. So I, I consider the standard barrel subgroup, and I want to find an non empty intersection of my orbit with this barrel subgroup. 
So this, uh, why I am uh, saying that this is a classical formulation? Because Borel subgroup, it's a very structural object. Uh, in, uh, an, uh, in, uh, it's, it corresponds, uh, in analytical number theory, it corresponds to arithmetic progressions, more or less. And A is uh, more or less a random set. Uh, I will show you at the end that actually A is a random somehow. So I am interested in, in, uh, in finding non empty intersection of A uh, with, of random set with a uh, structural set, and moreover uh, of some power, uh, like some set, yes, some power of A with uh, a very structural set. It's a classical problem. But uh, uh, and maybe it's it's uh, the more the most attractive point of our uh, proof that uh, this uh, non-commutative uh, 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 problem uh, actually is a little bit is 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 easier than the uh, 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 classical uh, analytical problem because uh, in this point. Uh, of the proof, uh, non commuted activity helps us. Uh, I mean the following. So uh, we want to find an empty intersection by multiplying uh, this um, intersection from B, uh, from the left and from the right. Uh, I see that this um, uh, problem is equivalent to this one. And you see, I have BA and AB here. So uh, uh, I have two different products of A. And by our growth result, either AB or BA must grow anyway. And after that, I uh, broke this square, uh, P squared barrier. Uh, now I am larger than P squared. And I can apply Lanzarizai's results or his ghost results. And uh, we uh, did it with machine in our previous uh, paper. So, uh, what about model Hensley conjecture? Uh, in this situation, uh, my set A is, 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 is thinner. Uh, the house of dimension just great, a little bit greater than one half. So, size of A is uh, uh, P to the one plus epsilon, more or less. Uh, here, uh, other, uh, another classical result uh, helps us. It's a, a structural theorem of Dixon. So he classified uh, all uh, um, uh, subgroups of SL2 of FP. There are just uh, Borel subgroups that conjugates and subgroups of Borel subgroups. Uh, Borel subgroups has size P squared. After that, there is a gap. So the, the, uh, the, uh, the another series of subgroups uh, uh, have size P plus minus one. And after that, there is another gap. So there are just... Uh, 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 several finest ugly subgroups like uh, A4, F4, A5. So just by size, my set A, uh, the orbit of A avoids uh, uh, all these the, the hetero subgroups and these uh, uh, finest subgroups. So my uh, my uh, enemy now uh, it's a barrel subgroup uh, and it's conjugates and uh, we know. Uh, the following general results. So if I uh, have uh, the following uh, assumption, if my A, A is so, so large, then I uh, intersects, intersect uh, all the parabolic or barrel subgroups. So uh, you see that because of this one, uh, our assumption A is greater than P1 uh, plus delta just coincides with this uh, restriction. And I find a uh, non-empty uh, uh, intersection of A to the N and uh, any, any actually Borel subgroup uh, B. So uh, once again, uh, uh, we obtain, uh, using this technique, we obtain the following uh, modular uh, uh, Hensley uh, uh, result. Uh, yes, and um, uh, uh, as for uh, as for uh, this result with epsilon, uh, uh, we need in a more in much more careful analysis of my set A. Uh, 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 actually, in the, in the 
In terms of analytical number theory, I uh, calculated all exponential sums, all uh, representations of, all, of this set A. I proved uh, there is an exponential um, uh, consolation here. Uh, 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 methods of additive combinatorics uh, were used uh, in this derivation. Plus, of course, uh, have got types results uh, on growth in SL2. Uh, and uh, other combinatorics. Uh, so we have this result, and that's all. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, so thank you very much for this very rich lecture. Uh, so, of course, it's open for discussion. And let me start with two remarks. Remark one is you mentioned this. Uh, result uh, extending Korobov from prime moduli to general moduli of 2007 or so. If I remember correctly, Gerhard Larcher in the 80s had already such a result. It's published in the Monatshefte. I don't remember the citation correctly, but it's somewhere in the Monatshefte. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a comment on this. Thank you, thank you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah? I can give a comment. I can give a comment. Yeah, please, Nikolai. Uh, uh, Gerhard Larcher gave a result about discrepancy. He improved essentially discrepancy. Yes. He improved discrepancy, ah, yes. log square bound to log log bound. Yes, yes. This is, but not for composite uh, numbers. It is in Manaschepta indeed. It is a wonderful paper. And when uh, Bukowski Mm, uh, proved a general result for arbitrary dimensional. Dimensional. I was the person uh, who uh, advised him to uh, add the reference to Larcher. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is related, but not the same. Yes, it That's... is not the same. It is not the same. It is about yeah. discrepancy. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. problem with discrepancy is easier. Uh -huh. For discrepancy, we have not log square, which follows from Zaremba. Yeah, yeah, clear, yeah. Times lock lock, which follows from Larker. Yes, yes. It, yes. it is a wonderful result indeed. I like it very much. So, okay. But so, thanks. Was... This was my first observation. The second observation is just a, uh, yeah, just a, an advertisement. <laughs> um, we had an, a, a Kontorovich here in, in our SIRM uh, program as an online lecturer uh, in October with a series of four lectures on Saremba conjecture. Um, and uh, of course, he, 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 he gave talks on his work with Burger. So it fit on, this on the density one result. So this is very nicely complementary to, to what you have achieved here. So uh, thanks again for that. And maybe there are other questions or remarks. <laughs>